All right, let's do what you came to do. Let's go. First question. Hey, Coach, Jake Schwann is DMVR. My man, my man. How, How you, you doing, doing, Coach? Excellent. Um, this time last year, you know, you were recovering for, from some surgeries. Um, surgeries. So I was just wondering, you know, personally for you, how much better do you feel right now health-wise, and Great. then how much better do you feel about the team this time First this year? First and foremost, let me take care of the team. I feel so much better about the team, not only because of the young men that we've uh, accumulated inside this locker room, but also the staff um, and how they're working together. The coordinators are phenomenal. Um, the support staff is, is second to none, I feel. I think we all really have a cohesive bond that's uh, truly admirable. As far as I'm feeling really good, much better. I had, uh, I think I got a total of probably 40 stitches in my groins last year at this time, one on the left, one on the right, to get the blood clots out. But we're feeling really good. I'm walking or running, lifting every day. I'm going to have my sexy on by the time the first game is uh, – is hell. So all my shots when I'm pouring this way or pouring that way, I'm going. It's going to hit right. So I'm really working on myself as well. Thank you for asking about my body as well. Hey, Coach I'm Brian hey, Howell from Bullet Daily Camera. Good. How are you? Good. Um, I want to ask you about. You know, they were talking about the GPA. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the correlation between that and how, how can that translate discipline. to the field? It's discipline. It's it's a tremendously uh, disciplined, tremendously uh, something that we we don't play about. Because forget the field. These guys got to be professionals. It's not all about football sometimes. With, with me, and, and we got to win. We know that. But my dream, and I hope I, I, they brought me a cake uh, at the conclusion of the practice today, and usually people close their eyes and make a wish. I made a wish openly, and I told them that I, I would want all these young men to be professionals in some capacity, not only on the field but off the field. Great fathers. Great uh, young men to their to their siblings, to their mothers, the community, and everything. I just want them to add to anything that they touch. That's, that's my dream and my prayer for these young men. So having a GPA, that's the main thing. This thing is only for a moment. Nobody could ever take that GPA and your education that you receive from this wonderful university. So that's uh, tremendous. I think it's a tremendous feat. It's to be applauded. Hi, Coach. Adam Mr. Tiger, 24-7. I don't think we've had a chance to talk to you about Damian Lewis yet and being your new defensive line coach. Right. Did you have a connection there? What, what does he bring to the staff? Everything. Um, experience, first rounder, been there, done that. It's, 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 it's hard to direct a person and, and teach them where to go and you hadn't been there yourself. It's kind of hard to give me direction to somewhere you hadn't been. You tell me about the restaurants you like because you've been there and you like the food because you tasted it. It's hard to tell these kids what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it, what not to do and all that, and you have not done anything. So uh, that's the new kid that's coming up in America these days. They, they from the show me state. They from the show me state. They want to see film and what you've accomplished in your life that uh, um, gives you the propensity to, to give them direction. He is an unbelievable coach. I have a, a mechanism that I can sit in my office and watch all the meetings that goes on as well, as well as going to them periodically. And he's a heck of a teacher. Um, then you throw in Coach Sapp in there, it's, it's phenomenal, that room. Uh, coach Dancy is with the head coach at Mississippi Valley State. I mean, he is a coordinator type of guy that we are blessed to have as outside linebackers coach. And that whole staff is phenomenal, man. It all, it all starts with Rob, though. Rob is doing a great job communicating and getting these guys on the same page and having input from everyone. Great question. Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. I remember last year I asked about the cornerback competition. I want to ask about it again. You have Travis, and you have two capable cornerbacks with DJ McKinney and Preston Hodge. Yeah. What are you seeing within that room right now? Um, I'm seeing pretty much four to five guys that can bump and run and cover all day. That uh, you don't have to blitz. You don't have to have exotic things on, on defense because these guys can get it done. But not only that, that front. Um, cooperates with the back end. That front is unbelievable. The pass rushers that that we have is shoot, uh, Mr. Hayes and Uncle Lola. Uncle, can I, Uncle Lola. Uncle, did I say that right? Yeah. It scared me. I can't believe it. But my, first of all, I want to digress a bit and thank the head coach from Pittsburgh for really preparing those young men for us. He did a great job. I love those two young men. They're really great players and they're going to be pros. And I heard that someone took a shot at one of them uh, verbally. Uh, 
<laughs> so Mr. Hayes just wanted me to make sure I add that in for him. But thank you, Pittsburgh. I appreciate everything. God bless you. Hey, Coach RK. For uh, just curious, you know, we we all we know about Travis and Shador, and those guys are balling. But any players yeah. that maybe don't have as much fanfare around them that have really stood out to you this camp? The defense is coming, man. These young men is probably six pass rushers there that's going to get home to the quarterback. I'm talking about from the outside, but from the inside, these guys are handling their jobs. Of shoot, I mean, I could, I, I have to name all of them because these guys are really taking care of their business. And Vic Kwan, he's just uh, coming back. Barnes, he's just coming back from an injury. He's trying to get back together. But Bentley has stepped it up tremendously. Trevor is 224 pounds right now. Uh, these guys are, are really performing well. I, I love what I'm seeing on the defensive side of the ball. I love the coordination of everything from uh, Coach Livingston. I, I really, I wish we could push fast forward because I'm, I'm ready to get get going. I'm ready to play. Hey, Coach, I'm press. Um, you've bolstered your offensive line here in, in this second season. What does bolstered mean? You, Beefed Thank it you. up because I mean, you know, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't know all that bolstered stuff. I never used that in a sentence in my all life. All right, you beefed up your offensive line in the South Season. Beefed up. How, how do you uh, sort of microwave improved? That chemistry? Improved. How about improved? Let's say that we've you improved our offensive line. Okay. How do you how do you get that? Everybody talks about that. So, you know, the five have to work in unison, and, and the chemistry is such an, an important thing. What is chemistry? You guys use it all the time. What is it? Yeah, but you guys work together. You don't like each other, most of you. You love each other. No, you don't. <laughs> you definitely don't love the guy back there. Y'all can't stand him. But you still work together. You get the job done. We we generally have a, 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 a love and a admiration for one another. We really do. Rather you throw the word chemistry out or not. Everybody keep throwing that word out. Some of you don't even have chemistry at home, but you go there every day. <laughs> That's the end of that question, I guess. <laughs> Next guy. Eric Christensen with CBS. CBS Tyler. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing nothing with CBS. Next question. Joe Rigo, my last I ain't got nothing to do with you. This is above that. I ain't got nothing to do with you. I got love for you. I appreciate you, respect you. I ain't got nothing to do with you. They know what they did. I'm here in Denver, not national. You are who you are. Okay. CBS is CBS. All right. Joe, we got to do with you. I respect you. I'm, I, that's why I told you that. I'm looking you in the eye as a man. I respect you. I got love for you. But what they did was foul. Coach uh, Joe Rico, my last voice for the final word. I'm talking about the trenches. You know, the trenches are where it starts for me in football. Yeah. I saw a lot of great skill position players out there last well, year. Well, that was the easiest thing to acquire. Right, but, and, but hold on, hold on. we know that, that the they easy, work together, right? That was the easiest thing to attract in your first year because that's yep. my position. So when big fellas see a like thereof or they see a quarterback that can really spin it, now they're prompt to come. Now they see a difference in the um, – Linebackers in the secondary now, they're saying, okay, well, shoot, we got the line now. We're going to score some points. So we got to go there to be relentless on the defensive line side of that. That's why we got all the pass rushers, because when you sit and interview them and talk to them, you say, well, you're going to be up by 14 in the fourth quarter. It's going to be a wonderful thing. And you may have some pass rushers coming from a school that was down 14 in the fourth quarter. And why would they want to stay there? Because now they don't get to utilize their gifts. So you got to understand the logic of everything. The, everything is right on schedule as we plan. I love it. I love it. Thank you, sir. I, and, and I do believe this year I'm on record with eight wins. Amen. Yep. Only eight? Eight. Good. Cool. 104.3 The Fan. How you doing? Good. Good. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. When it comes to the new uniforms, we haven't heard much about those, and it's I know there have been you know, rumored leaks, but yeah. I was wondering what went into the development process of changing that look, and then for you, when, we, when we, should we expect to see them? Well, uniforms don't win or lose games. They just enhance the look. They just sell sales more, help provoke sales more, selling more merchandise. Um, everywhere we've gone, we've always enhanced the look. <laughs> you know, from high schools to several different high schools to college at, at, at Jackson now here. So not only the uniforms, the cleats that match the uniforms, those are going to be uh, suitable as well. 
So these kids, uh, these young men are going to have a wonderful look. You know, the model, you look good, you feel good. And then consequently, they play good. And that's what we're aiming for. How much of a hand did you have played in designing those? Heavy, and when should we expect to see uh, those? A heavy hand. You're going to see them real soon. Thank you, sir. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell again. Uh, okay. uh, two questions for you about Travis. I'll ask one at a time. But uh, first off, uh, is it fun for you to coach somebody that can match and be skillful like you are? Well, Travis is better. He's is that better. fun for you? At the agent stage, he's better. Is it, but is that fun for you to coach somebody that can do some of the things you did? Yeah, yeah. Not only that, he's a good human being. He's not smoking, not drinking, not outside whoring, not doing crazy things. He's, 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 he's at the high, one of the highest GPAs on the team. Like, he's a great human being, and he can play. Character is second to none. That's why I don't mind fishing with him and he coming to Texas. And we're not talking about fishing on the boat, although we talk junk to each other all the time, but we're talking about life. We're talking about next moves. We're talking about land acquisition. We're talking about so many different things of life, fathering, you know, loving, you know, how, how, how the family plays a role in all of this. So it's just a delight to, to have caught him coming straight out of high school and he stayed and endured the test of time. And then the second question is, you've talked about how you learn things from Shadur when you talk to him about offense. Do you learn things from Travis when you talk to him about football? What did I learn from Shadur on offense? I'm sorry. Well, you've talked about how, you know, when, you, you'll, that. when, you'll talk, when you've talked to him, you'll oh, get on the, the he'll, things he'll, that he'll, he'll he's seen. Right, that, right, right. Yeah, okay. I'm just curious if you learn the same type of stuff from Travis in the, when he talks to you about Yeah, that. you could always learn from your players. You really, you want them, you want to know where they are, what they thought, what they were thinking on that particular play, because we're always barking out um, ideas and understandings, but sometimes you got to listen to them and see what they saw. That's the first thing I say to Shador. What did you see? Um, Travis is different, man. He saw it. <laughs> Shoot, he saw it. He's a phenomenal athlete, man. He saw it. Proud of that kid. On and off the field tremendously. Hey, Coach Kyle. Uh, what is Jimmy Horn Jr. capable of this year, and can we see a, a big leap from him? Yeah, I think he played phenomenal last year. Um, he had a couple down moments, but Jimmy is a phenomenal athlete. Now that you you got LeJonte, you, you got – you know, you got so many of these young men that, that can flat out do it. Will, uh, see, when I start doing this, I start mentioning somebody and they get sensitive. Um, Mr. Timmons, Draylon, you got uh, Marion, Cam. It, it's, it's so many of these guys that can have impact on this offense. It's unbelievable. And our backfield, our running backs, I think we got four to five of them that can flat out go. You could use them any way you did decide to because all of them are pretty good out of the backfield catching the ball. They definitely could run between tackles outside of the tackles, but also they could pick up the blocks. And they're smart young men, tremendous GPAs, most of them. Couple more. Healer, the Denver Post. Happy summer, my man. You, you don't like us, man. Why do you do this to yourself? Come on. You no, don't like us. Mark likes me, by the way. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark said he likes me. No, so but that's you, one. you don't. Why do you it's do this, though? No, no, I'm sorry. Two-parter if I could. No, I'm serious. Football why question. do you do this? Like, you know you don't. Like, why do you do no, this? No, no, no. It's not about that. Football question. Football no, no. question. Why do you do this? Like, it would be hard for me to really engage in someone I don't like or something I don't like. I'm just asking why. Like, why? I've got to pay the bills. What did I do? You didn't do anything. It's not about that. But this but is a football why? question. I'm asking you why. Yeah, you can ask. But that, that's okay, not answer me. Because yeah. you want me to answer you. So yeah, okay. That's fine. That's fair. Why? Yeah. Why? Because I have Give questions. Give me your why. why what, what's your why? What do you want to know? Why do you, you always on attack? Like, what, what did we do? Where am, I, where, where am I on attack today? Where am I on attack? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you opportunities to be on attack. Well, but I, I'm asking you why. Like, what does it do for you? Like, what it, happened? No, it's, not, it's not about me. But what happened to get you like this? It's a good question. No, I'm serious. Because I want to help. Like, because, no, I'm serious. I want to help. Because it's not normal. We can talk about that. We can talk about that. Okay. Can I ask you a football question? No, seriously. No, we'll talk about that. When we talk about that, I'll talk about that with you. Can we ask you a football question, please? When I talk about that, we talk about that. We okay. can talk about that. I have a question over here. Let's go. Right. So this is your birthday. Do you have any birthday plans for the time? Um, well, I have uh, three kids on campus that probably didn't get me anything. <laughs> One is here now. 
uh, whatever plans that they desire for their good old dad, I'm willing to uh, encounter. I'm willing to, to be there with them because I love them this that much. Thank you for your consistency over the years, son. <laughs> I really appreciate what you do on every birthday. Nothing. <laughs> What, what, what happened today? Well, you got a cake. They brought, they brought a cake out. Something else happened on your birthday. What happened, son? I forget. I'm old, man. Younger. Oh. Your had a baby today. Oh, I forgot. You forgot to give me that? Yeah, thank God. That, and that's how good God is. That's why I ain't got time for the foolishness. That's how good God is. Like, God would choose me on my birthday for my daughter or my kids to have the first child. I'm, the first time I'm a grandfather on my birthday. Do you understand how beautiful that is? How much of a blessing that is? You think I'm here to put up with some bullshit? No, I'm here to make light of the blessings and the wonderful things of life that God has afforded us. That's what I'm about, man. I'm about helping, inspiring, encouraging, motivating, and just being a, a catalyst to the next person. And that's why I love uh, probably 85% of you all in here. I truly do, but thank you, son, for a reminder. God bless you, DeAndre. I love you, baby girl. I know. She probably still out right now. She probably posted Instagram pictures knowing my daughter. You saw? Have you seen the baby yet? I seen him on Facetime. Was he sizable? <laughs> <laughs> He's a little baby. Be a soccer yeah, he's still gonna be a soccer player. He's not gonna be a football player. <laughs> might be. Might be. Thank you, son, for that. I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh. Well, the way I'm looking, I'm, feel, I'm not feeling how I'm looking. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm feeling good, Cello. I really am, because I have you here. You keep me going, son. Uh, hey, yes. Coach. Uh, Jack Harlow with Buffalo's Wire. Jack, how you doing? <laughs> good, how, good. how was your summer? It's been great. There yeah, you go. Great so far. Glad to get back into football. Though. Awesome. Um, but just wanted to ask about the open scrim or open practice next Friday. Just curious what your thought process was behind that. And just um, really makes that important. You, you hit uh, monotony and you get into a schedule or routine, and I don't want to get routine. And one thing about it, when you hit a, a little low, I don't want to hit the low. We hadn't hit that. These guys are flying around, and I, I'm trying to prevent that. So the thing about when you practice in front of company, no one's going to embarrass themselves, right? When you guys are out there, everybody's going to go hard. The camera's going to be on. It, you know, we're going to protect everything. We're not going to show what we're going to run first game, most, most likely. But we just want to change it up, and also we want to give the – Wonderful fan base opportunities to touch the young man um, in this program and see him on the first hand. We're probably going to take pictures, maybe sign a few autographs with the fan base. I'm pretty sure we're going to sell it out and pack it out because that's what we do because, oh, you're going to do your part in uh, putting it out there, making sure it's a sold-out event, a venue. I don't know how many it holds. How many do it hold? 5,000. 5, so we expect in 10. <laughs> we want 10,000. Holding 5,000, we want 7,000. We'll be kind to the city. But we want it to be sold out next uh, Friday, right? Next Friday. It's going to be a wonderful uh, event. It really is. And I want, it, I want that for our young men. I really do. And I want that for you all as well. You all, the majority of you all, have done a wonderful job. And I thank you for your support, for your love, for your impact, for fighting uh, against the nonsenses of life that we sometimes have to cope with. And uh, we all know why we have to cope with that. Um, and uh, too much is given, much is required. And I'm thankful for the, all that is given, but I understand the requirements. So I appreciate that. It comes along with it. So you can't want God to bless you and the enemy not to stress you. It's going to be part of it. We good with that? So you guys remember that when you journey in through life. If you want to be blessed, somebody's going to try to stress you. We good? God bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. It's going to be a phenomenal year. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. God bless you.